Coming up on County Connection. Some college students are getting their hands a little dirty. We'll find out what they're digging up over at one of our county parks. Our libraries are great for getting books and hitting the books. Did you know you could earn your high school diploma through a county library? And if you're a beachgoer, you'll want to stick around. We're showing you what to do if the tsunami hits. First, County Health and Human Services delivers a statewide service for children needing occupational or physical therapy. And it's provided at no cost. This is my daughter. She's perfect. Early on, about three months, four months in, Ava was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And we had no idea what that entailed and even at that age you just don't know what she would be capable of. Fortunately we live in California and in San Diego where there's a lot of resources and this is one of the first resources we came to here at CCS. All of the kids we see have a physical disability, physical limitation. So we work on strengthening, improving range of motion, helping the kids get around their environment, and then the OTs help uh, kids learn how to help themselves. So feed themselves and even participate in play when they're really, really young. One, two, three. Oh, good job. Most families, when they first come in, sometimes they don't even know what physical and occupational therapy can do for their child. Um, you know, but we orient them, they see other kids in the clinic, and so they kind of realize the th types of things that we work on. She's changed so much over the past two years with the therapy. Um, you know, like I said, she can roll over, she's, she can reach for things, she can, I can say, do you want up? And she can lift her arms up and show me that she wants up. But CCS has just been wonderful. Very good. Wow. Good, good pushing push with those arms. The great thing about our program is that you don't need to financially qualify. You don't pay any money for their services. If you have a child that has one of these uh, medical conditions, the therapy services are free. And basically, as long as there are needs of the child, like we see the children until they're 21 years old. And so we get to see them through their lifetime and help them in different pieces of their life that they need help. CCS therapy, it's invaluable. It's just so much of what Ava's, how she's grown and how she's learned to move and do things for herself is because of the therapy we get at CCS. Even though they have a disability and they have difficulty moving, you know, we encourage them to go out in their communities. We even will meet with them at the YMCA to transition them to community recreation and all of that aligns with the vision of Live Well San Diego to get out in the communities and be healthy. I believe that she's gonna be able to do everything in her potential. Um, we're hoping she'll walk talk, she'll definitely communicate, and through all these therapies, it's going it's to help us get there. If you're a family in need of these services, you can call 619-528-4000. Now there's a place where the past meets the present, and it's all thanks to the work of some college students who don't mind getting their hands a little dirty. Check it out. Once upon a time, everything underground was above ground. And at Los Penasquitos Canyon Preserve, there are a few students sweeping and scraping their way to the past. This park is incredibly rich in, in history. Looking good. This is Dr. Tim Gross, Associate Professor of Anthropology at San Diego City College. Today we're continuing our ongoing excavation project here at the Penasquitos Adobe. This is an excavation class that's part of a certificate program for students. San Diego City College began its excavation program in 1991. Dr. Gross took over the program in 2016. We have a very nice arrangement with the county where we work here in the spring. We know that people have been using this area for thousands of years and cultures have crossed over during that time. And the things that they find here can help us piece all of that together to really understand our resources and be able to tell the story of this incredible place. We've had some collapse here. We have to keep exact location of everything because it's the piece of trash, the, the bit of metal or the horseshoe or the piece of pottery tells us that it's a horseshoe or a piece of metal. 
But when you find that horseshoe with nails and coke, coal, slag, then you begin to see not just nails and coke and slag, but a blacksmith shop. What are you seeing, Erica? That looks like it might be cow, huh? Dr. Gross was a high school volunteer at San Diego State and the Museum of Man. I've been doing this all oh, for 50 years now. Throw me the idol, I throw you the whip. Give me the whip. Adios, senor. Comparing him to Indiana Jones might be a stretch, though. Indiana Jones, you know, was shown as working for a museum, and you sort of get the notion that stuff goes back to the museum, but everything that I excavated and have through my entire career winds up in a facility that can take care of it in perpetuity so we can continue to learn from it. Even if I've reported it very well by 2020 standards, in 2050 there'll be new techniques that they can look at that same material and learn more without having to dig up more sites. Another difference is that um, I don't have a whip, and you'll notice there are no sidearms. What he does have is plenty of experience that comes in handy with his diverse group of students. I started out in a biological anthropology class and I found out that I loved learning more about archaeology and bones and all of that and this was a really good way to experience it firsthand. I had found uh, an obsidian arrowhead and I found it on my first dig and it blew my mind. So from there it just lit the fire and <laughs> here I am. Everybody is pleased to be here. They're working hard. They are each one trying to learn the skills. Skills that include mapping and screening to note taking. But Dr. Gross can't do it all alone. So you guys have already been explained why we pedestal things. Amy Ross is one of his assistants at Los Penasquitos. What's great about this program and working for a county park is that these students get to see what it's like to do it in the U.S. A lot of academic archaeology that you get at university is, you know, Peru or the, the pyramids. It's a great opportunity to do this locally at a much lower cost and uh, prepare these students for what it really means to be an archaeologist here and not just doing the big fancy stuff. Visiting the ranch house is wonderful and we hope to keep adding to the story that they tell in the museum there. So keep checking back. Although they didn't dig up the lost ark, students did unearth some history about the old ranch house. Learn more about this historic site on sdparks.org. Now, not only is San Diego County known for its parks, we also have some pretty awesome beaches. But a tsunami can threaten our coastline and our safety. Don't worry, we're showing you how to protect yourself from one. San Diego is known for great weather and beautiful beaches. But did you know that there are natural hazards that threaten our coasts? A tsunami is a series of traveling ocean waves or surges caused by earthquakes, landslides, or volcanoes on the ocean floor. Unlike regular ocean waves, a tsunami acts more like a fast-rising flood, with waves spanning hundreds of miles and traveling up to 500 miles per hour. That's as fast as a commercial jet. As the waves get closer to the shore in shallow water, they slow down and reach heights of 20 to 50 feet. Depending on the source of the tsunami, you may have anywhere from hours to just minutes to react. So how can you know if a tsunami is coming? Pay attention to the signs. The most dangerous place to be during a tsunami is by the shore. If you're near the coast and feel an earthquake with strong shaking, that lasts more than 20 seconds long. Hear a loud ocean roar. Or if you notice that the water starts to recede dramatically, do not wait for an official tsunami warning. Keep calm and immediately move inland about one mile into higher ground 100 feet up on foot and stay there. Follow tsunami evacuation route signs if you can. Never go down to the shore to investigate. And if you're in a building, move to the highest floor possible. Monitor local news and radio stations for information. And wait until emergency officials say it is safe to return home. Tsunami waves and their dangerous currents can last for hours or days and are usually filled with debris and other dangerous materials. While tsunamis may be rare, whether you live, work, or visit San Diego County's 70 miles of beautiful coastline, it is important to know your risks and be prepared. To learn more about tsunamis in San Diego County and what you can do to be prepared, 
visit ReadySanDiego.org. So yes, tsunamis are rare here, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be prepared. ReadySanDiego.org is the go-to place for emergency tips and info. Fifty-six might seem old for a high schooler, but one man is on a mission to finish up what he started years ago. And he's doing it with the help of our county library. High school graduation sparks hope for the future and encourages graduates to dream big. But sometimes circumstances prevent students from getting a diploma. That's what happened to Robert Johnson. Being young and not into school too much, um, I was pulled in the uh, first two months of my senior year with my counselor and they just basically told me you don't have enough credits to graduate. So I had went to night school for a while, I ended up getting a job, um, problems at home, whatnot. Now county libraries have a new online program called Library High School, helping adults who never finished high school to get their diploma. We have people from all walks of life completing this program. We have mothers, we have caregivers, we have people who are over 50, we have students who are under 20. Uh, we have people who are completing the program for their own reasons. Robert spent 34 years as a trucker, and when he lost his job, he saw Library High School as an opportunity and got accepted into the program. Had always worked for all these years up to the last, you know, a year and four months ago, and just decided that, you know, I wanted that high school diploma. I wanted it for me, I wanted it for my mom, I wanted it for my wife. Uh, we have a lot of people who have uh, jobs and they're fitting the program work into uh, their evenings or their Saturdays or when they're best suited for learning. You find the time in a hectic life and I have a hectic life so I found the time and I just made it happen and saw it through. This is an online high school and you'll be getting an actual diploma that's equal to any diploma from any other high school in the country. I would highly recommend it. I recommend it to anybody to further your education and make more of yourself out of life. Robert is one of the county's first students to complete library high school. I'm not gonna go out and run and tell the whole world, but on one hand, I do feel like I want to tell the whole world because I did it, you know, I, I stuck to it and I saw it through to completion, so I'm proud of that. For Robert Johnson, getting his diploma will bring a different kind of celebration. Coming later in life, but proving when it comes to finishing high school, it's never too late. Earning this diploma means new opportunities for Robert, and he's so excited for this new chapter in his life. Speaking of chapters, our libraries are always looking for a few good people to round out the team. If you haven't stepped foot in a library for a while, you'd be amazed at what we're doing these days. The biggest thing is that we provide a welcoming space for everybody. Personally, the thing that I take home the most is having completely and totally, without any equivocation or doubt, changed lives. So one of my personal goals is to be an example of what a librarian is now. I love coming to work every day. I love my job. I love being here with everyone. Every day when you wake up, you're not quite sure what to expect, but you know that you can go in and you can make a positive impact in people's lives. I've studied music my entire life. So one of the programs I started is one called Storytime Dance Party. I love it. It's like a dream come true. I've always wanted to be a librarian. I feel this great sense of pride in being able to serve a group and a community. What makes it special is um, just the communities and the relationships that you can develop. I feel that uh, the most impact that I make is with the kids. There's real impact in the work that we get to do here, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Interested in applying? You can check for openings online at the link below. A room with movable walls and a use of force simulator? 
These are just a couple of the highlights in the new state-of-the-art probation training facility. Here's a tour. This is the probation uh, training uh, center, and uh, this is uh, mainly for uh, officers. We used to go um, rent every time we have a training, every time we have um, graduation for our new officers. Uh, we decided we're gonna have our own training facility. Our wellness, this is where if you have any like emotional or like uh, any kind of like, issues, we have people to uh, listen and to help them out our uh, big training room which uh, it can hold up to 150 people uh, with a stage uh, for our graduation. The simulation housing basically yeah, it's a kit uh, we get it and we are the first people in California to have it, which we are like, excited for it. Basically, you configure a house the way you want, with how many rooms you want, and uh, we train officers how to enter houses when they want to arrest somebody. We have a very nice gym, which uh, has uh, all the equipment uh, that um, you dream of, and it's going to be for all the probation um, staff. We have some training that required to be behind the screen, and uh, this is why uh, we had this uh, computer lab. We want our officers to have the best training and to have to provide the training at any time. So by having this facility, then we're giving our officers more opportunities to train to serve the public better. Probation's new facility will open this month and be available for training to all county law enforcement. Well, that's it for now. Remember to visit countynewscenter.com to stay connected with your county. See you soon. Don't forget to follow us on social media for your county connection.